I hold in my hand a five centimeter cube of graphite, 50 millimeters cubed. And I've got a question for you. If this were made up of virus particles, how many people do you think it could kill? Well, I'll give you a clue. If this were made up of sodium cyanide, one of the most toxic compounds known to man, it weighs about, you know, a quarter of a kilo, half a pound, that sort of thing. It could kill about two and a half thousand people. So how many people could it kill if it were made up of virus particles? You're on the assumption that, you know, a single virus particle is enough to, to infect someone and kill them. Well, lots, obviously. Uh, what would you, you reckon? A uh, um, hundred thousand? A hundred million? I mean, surely not a hundred million. That's just bloody stupid. Well, turns out, it's not just there's enough here to... <laughs> To kill everyone on Earth, there's enough to kill everyone on Earth about 10 million times over. What? 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 Okay, so in order to understand why you get these numbers, you've got to understand how big a virus particle is. So what I've got here is a calibration slide. Obviously, these are my fingers for scale. And that's a single one of my hairs for scale. And hairs are about a... Um, these are millimetres here, and a hair is about a tenth of a millimetre, a hundred microns. And so, over here, I've got the whole thing under a microscope. So let's get some light on there. Boom! So this now, all on the same scale, is going to be my little finger. My little finger and a human hair. We're gonna zoom in, all the way in, on that human hair. All the way in. Yeah, the distance in the big marks there is about one millimeter. And a millimeter is a thousand microns. And so human hairs are about a tenth of a millimetre, so about a hundred microns. Well, it turns out viruses are so small that you can't even see them with uh, an optical microscope like this. The smallest objects that you can see with an optical microscope like this are about a micron, which is about the wavelength of visible light. So viruses are so small that you can't even see them with visible light. Or... Looked at another way, you get about a thousand virus particles just across a single hair like that. So we can do a rough calculation here. How many virus particles would we need to infect the entire planet? So a millimeter would be about 10,000 virus particles. So what if we went for a cubic millimeter? How many virus particles would that contain? About a trillion. How many people are there on Earth? About 10 billion. That means that a cubic millimeter would contain enough virus particles for 100 for every person on Earth. But we're not going to haggle over the little figures here. We're just going to say a cubic millimeter is enough to contaminate everyone on Earth with a single virus particle. And it would weigh about a milligram. That's a thousandth of a gram or a millionth of a kilogram. Remember that number. Now, there's a reason why I started off with a cube of graphite like this. You know, it's a good, solid thing that you can get a good feel of. That's about a quarter of a kilo of graphite. This bag here contains one kilo of graphite, but this is as really small particles, but really small particles that show up really well under a microscope. So we can actually weigh the graphite that we would, uh, yeah, the graphite equivalent of viruses that we would need to contaminate the whole planet. And then we're going to see how well that stuff sticks to your hands. And bear in mind that if you can see it, it's already 10 times bigger than a virus. And this also, bear in mind, doesn't have uh, an evolutionary need to stick to you like viruses do. Awesome. So this isn't the world's most sensitive balance, but it's pretty good. There you go. It doesn't just weigh two 
a milligram. That's a milligram there. It's super sensitive. I need to be on Mount Hilda much more solid table than this anyway. So a milligram is one thousandth of a gram. This will weigh um, to one hundredth of a milligram. Uh, we just need to weigh one milligram of our graphite powder. To give you an idea of just how sensitive this all is, I'm going to start by putting a bit of aluminium foil in there on which I'm going to weigh my stuff. So that alone, just the aluminium foil, weighs about 180 milligrams. That's that boy there. Right, so we've now got to weigh one milligram of graphite. So this is an outstandingly fiddly gesture. I mean, just the air movements here will, it's air damped, which will help, but even at that. Let's try that. Oh, who <laughs> the man? So, okay, I'm a little over. 1.2 milligrams. 1.3 milligrams. That, if it were virus particles, would be enough to contaminate the whole planet. So let's get that under the microscope. So there we have a human hair. And for comparison, oh, it looks ugly, doesn't it? Enough virus particles. If virus were made of graphite, that is. I mean, you can see these virus particles are so small you can't see them, even even with the best optical microscope. Cool, right. So, let's see what sort of effect um, I'm gonna get if I get a nice clean finger and stick it in the virus particles. We'll, we'll see what effect that has on my fingers and what effect it has when I wash them. So in the first case, we're just going to take a look at a finger. We need to choose a nice clean finger. This is one I don't use much. And you can see, just now that's just from the casual handling of the graphite. And you can't see anything with the, uh, with the camera, of course, but the microscope that's just from the casual handling of the graphite it's got that far already you know just from sort of touching the graphite cube all right let's try my other hand see if that's any better let's try the little finger on this hand who is also pretty good actually okay i think we have a winner we are going to infect my little finger and we're going to infect it with the smallest touch on the graphite smallest of touches on the graphite right in the middle boom oh that's everything no okay let's get rid of most of it okay right so that was the smallest of touches on the little finger okay so let's get him under the microscope and see what that actually looks like oh my word i am infected okay so i'm going to do what any sensible person would do in these circumstances i'm going to try and brush the virus off okay so let's get rid of most of it okay starting to look more sensible yes. really give a good rub okay there we go super so it looks fairly clean now all right so this is the bit that should be virginally clean as you can see it might look fairly clean to the eye but the camera don't lie so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wash that with some water 
Okay, so let's bring you up here so you can see me washing my hands. Okay, you ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six seconds of hard scrubbing. Let's see what that does when we get them down here. So, it's not bad, but yeah, I can see there's still lots of the really little bits and some fairly big bits as well. So that was, oh no, it's absolutely everywhere still. And these, if you can see them, they're, they're 10 times bigger than a virus particle, or in other words, if you take one of those particles that you can see, it would be a clump of at least a hundred viruses, you know, 10 by 10 um, matrix of viruses would just about be big enough to see with a naked eye, um, sorry, with, a, with an optical microscope. That's the smallest particles you can see here. Right, let's give them another scrub. Okay, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's get him back under the microscope. And let's see what you look like now. Definitely see one or two particles. I mean, it's getting better, but this is like oh, actually, it looks pretty decent in the. Uh, no, I mean even at that, I mean you can see. I mean, bear in mind you need one virus particle for an infection, and anything that you can see here, even the slightest bit of black would be equal to a hundred virus particles. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add some detergent for my next scrubbing of my hands. So I'm just going to take the smallest bit of detergent, which of course is colossal when you consider it's only my little finger. And there we go, let's give that a, oh, it's nice and soapy now. Okay, and getting squeaky clean now. I think how many seconds that was, but let's get that back under the microscope. And now, how are we doing? Ah, uh, I can see at least one, but he's kind of swimming. I mean, we're getting there. We are definitely getting there. God, humans look disgusting up close. Okay, there's at least one particle. I saw him. Oh, humans are disgusting up close. Yeah, and there's still, oh, there, there you go. There's at least one or two particles. Cool, so what did we learn from this? Well, viruses are tiny, really, really tiny, and they get everywhere. The example of the graphite here is likely to be lowballing how persistent viral particles are on your skin. Now, if it's being pedantic, technically you don't even need a milligram a virus to contaminate the entire world. You only need one virus particle because viruses self-replicate if they get into your, into your body. And when they do so, they do it in astronomical numbers. Now, viruses don't have a plan here. It's just that if they replicate better, more of them is seen in the environment. They are the apex of evolutionary simplicity. And for anyone who's instantly perked up and said, hang on, how come you're showing me a picture of these if you said you couldn't see them with a microscope? 
Well, you can't see them with an optical microscope, but you can with essentially you know, things with shorter wavelengths, things like electron microscopes. The best you can do is try and keep those viral particles away from your sweet, juicy, fertile cells that the virus needs to reproduce. Now, sure, you can breed these particles in, but you know, the reality is most of these particles will settle out somewhere. And in most instances, it's far more likely that they're going to get into you by you touching something where there are virus particles and later touching your mouth. Now, washing with detergent, uh, soap, that sort of thing, is probably about 10 times more efficient than without. So safety tip here. Yes, washing your hands is great. But even better than washing your hands is not touching stuff in the first place. Now, you'd have thought that would have been public health tip number one everywhere. But it really isn't. Even the World Health Organization lead with, nope, you should wash your hands frequently. There are several measures you can adopt to protect yourself and others from getting the new coronavirus. Frequently clean your hands by using an alcohol-based hand rub product, like a gel, or wash your hands with soap and water. Well, I'll hand over to the, to, to the experts, but, but wash our, judge, our judgment is wash. Uh, washing your hands is the crucial thing. Which is all good enough, but it kind of reminds me of the old joke. You know, one guy says to the other, my mother always taught me to wash my hands after going to the toilet. To which the other replies, really, my mum taught me not to piss on my hands. I mean, but joking aside, the point is valid. If you're in a virus-affected area, not touching stuff, not getting the virus on you, you know, if you're in a situation where touching stuff isn't necessary, is a better solution than getting the virus on you and relying on washing to get it off again. Now, I've got to stress, it's not an either-or. You're always better off washing your hands, but you're even better off not getting it on you in the first place. You know, you just play like strip club rules. <laughs> no touching. So many thanks for watching. And naturally, all the stuff on the coronavirus gets demonetized instantly. Don't care about that because these videos are important to make. Something I felt strongly about since I did my first analysis, which was when there were only about 20,000 cases in China. That was the analysis where the conclusion was this was something that had to be respected. So if you want to support this stuff directly, you can do it through Patreon, and I'll leave the links below. I've also started up a daily analysis of the coronavirus spread on the Voice of Thunder channel. And finally, if you want to know what microscope I used here, it cost about 200 bucks and gets close to the optical limit. And you can get those at my Amazon store below as well. Although if you're ordering stuff there, uh, I'd probably leave it at least a month or so. So with that, thanks for watching and see you next time.